to be with you there, but I hope that for the next time, I think that we should uh, meet together face to face. So in the next maybe uh, 15 to 20 minutes, I would like to share our experiences and benefits and features of the advanced hybrid closed loop um, uh, system. So we all know that in the last maybe 22 years, almost 23 years, the uh, use of the CGM um, devices are increased, in, especially in the pediatric population. And if you look at back 10 years ago, it was only 6%. And in the, in, in the 2080, it was almost to 40%. Some of the center, they're using about maybe 50 or 60% like our uh, center. But uh, uh, coming from the type one uh, diabetes um, uh, exchange registry, we can see that um, Despite the use of the CGM devices, we are seeing increase of the hemoglobin A1C of the glycemic control, especially in the young children and adolescents and young adults. So this is the study which shows that the patients in the United States that were analyzed 2010 and 2012, they have the lower hemoglobin A1C in the pediatric groups comparing for those with 2016 and 2018. So it means that despite the use of the CGM devices, still we are struggling to improve the glycemic control. Why is like uh, why we why is is like that? So, actually, a couple of years ago, in the last um, uh, four years, we are experiencing the uh, hybrid closed loop, the, uh, almost the not fully closed loop systems. But before we have the open loop systems, and look at the situation. How does it look like with the sensor augmented pump therapy? On the upper part of the screen, you can see um, uh, almost the normal glycemic control here. This is the nighttime glucose values. And you can see here there's some suspense of the glucose delivery, which means that the insulin pump protects the low glucose values because the pump can stop by itself. But when we have the hyperglycemia in the, in the lower part of the screen, you can see here that the glucose values are going high. There are some alarms and that the patient during the night needs to wake up and to bolus manually to press the button on the pump and to decrease this glucose, um, uh, these glucose levels. This is why actually today we have um, the advanced hybrid closed loop and moving from the open loop to the closed loop, it looks like this. And I can say that we are moving from the glucose variability to the glucose stability and then insulin stability that we used to have goes to the insulin variability. Again, this is one day of the person who is using the open loop system. And uh, usually we have several basal rates. So it means that the insulin uh, levels in this patient are almost uh, uh, stable. But in this case, we're experiencing a lot of glucose variability. The, the glucose level levels are going high, going low, and then we have some suspense here. Doctor? But, yes? Yeah. Yeah. You're not uh, flick, uh, the, the slides are still uh, not showing yet. We just, yeah, the slideshow is not on. So I'm not sure because I, the, my screen is shared. Yeah, I don't know. I thought that we are waiting, but then they told me. So can you see it now, maybe? There you go. Okay. Now it's okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. So let's see the, the patient uh, who was using the insulin pump, the open loop system. So you can see here that we have so-called the insulin stability. Look at the basal rates that usually we have several basal rates, but there is almost a flat rate. And then we have the glucose variability here. It means that the glucose levels are going high and low during the day. When this patient was switched to the closed loop system, like the minimum 780G, look at what we have. Look at the insulin variability, because this insulin pump gives the insulin small increment of the boluses every five minutes based on the glucose levels. And that means we can go to, the, to, uh, to have the glucose stability. So it means that the insulin stability, what we used to have from the open loop, it goes to the insulin variability. And we're going to see on the next slides how does it look like. And this glucose variability, these huge variations during the day, they were stabilized and we have almost the flat curve. This is today what we have for the one uh, for the last year, the minimum 780G, the components, the minimum 780G looks almost the similar like the previous pumps with all the, with, with this screen and this diamond button. It uh, consists of the Guardian 4 sensor, which is the calibration free sensor with the Bluetooth technology. It gives the information every five minutes to the insulin pump therapy and the insulin pump, because it has it, it's a built in um, uh, uh, algorithm it uh, manages the insulin delivery every five minutes based on the glucose levels. This data, again, where the Bluetooth technology can be shared on the patient screen. And if the patient has the internet, it goes to the cloud server and then the patients and actually their families and the caregivers, they can see the glucose values. For those patients who wants to check their glucose levels, it can be used the, uh, the ACOCHA guide link meter, which means that all these data that are checked, it, uh, it will, it will uh, directly transmit to the insulin pump therapy. 
But today, and we are very lucky because two, years, uh, two weeks ago, we have started with the Guardian 4 sensor, which means that the data, the, this, this, this glucose sensor does not need to calibrate. So the patient are not pricking anymore. This data sends directly to the glucose, to the insulin pump therapy and the insulin pump therapy delivers the insulin dose. So what does it mean? It means that um, this is the day, how does it look like? We have the customizable uh, targets. Let's say that we can fix from 100 to 110 and 120 milligram per deciliter. It means that the insulin delivery, it goes, the basal insulin delivery, it's automatic, automated insulin delivery uh, to decrease the glucose levels to 100 milligram per deciliter. And then we have the target for the uh, bolus correction on 120 milligram per deciliter, which means that when the glucose levels was more than 120 milli, uh, 20 milligram per deciliter, the pump will start to push automatically with the, with the corrections. So these are the small increments of the bolus doses, which as you can see, if the glucose levels is increasing, then the pump will start to push with the more insulin. If the glucose levels again are increasing, then the pump will give some corrections here, and then the glucose levels will go back almost to the normal. So we have almost fully automated insulin delivery, why it is called hybrid because the patient still needs uh, still needs to announce the meal so they need to tell the pump that okay i will eat a meal which consists of 50 grams 60 grams and then the pump will calculate and will do the smooth corrections if needed this is how does it look like from the patient perspective um, side these are the three different scenarios and this is the time and target range here in the gray in, in this green area and these are the glucose um, uh, uh, glucose levels. So you see when the glucose levels are stable, this is the basal increments uh, that the pump is giving. As you can see here that the glucose is stable, there is uh, some kind of the insulin delivery here, but when the glucose is increasing with the blue stripes, you see that the pump is automatically giving the correction, corrections of the doses to keep the glucose levels in the normal, in, in the normal values. From the other side, because we have the data in the cloud, we can use and we are using a lot from, uh, for, uh, for analysis and to have the virtual visits. So I can say that maybe 80% of the, of the follow-up visits for the patient who are using the minimum 780G, we are using the, uh, the, 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 the virtual. So we are using the phone calls or Zoom or um, in the last period, we're using the teams uh, with, with our patients. Let's share some of the data, the international and then the local data. This is the US pivotal study, which um, analyzes the, the data uh, from the 160, almost 60 patients, patients with a type 1 diabetes. And they, they, um, they initiated the insulin pump therapy with the two different uh, groups, but the target of 100 and 120 milligram per deciliter. They were all using the insulin pump therapy before, as you can see, and they were very well controlled. As you can see here, the A1C was almost 7.5% and the timing target rate almost 69 percent when they switch with the, this insulin pump with the automated insulin pump with the both bolus and the basal insulin the, it increased the timing target range for almost 75 percent so almost six percent of, of the timing target range without in, in, um, increasing the hypoglycemic events and of course the time above the range was also decreased but when they analyze the data in the in the adolescence you can see here that they gain more uh, around 10 percent um, uh, time and target range. So from almost 62%, they increased the time and target range for 72.7%, which means that they went almost to the target of, of, for the CGM, um, uh, for the international consensus of the CGM uh, target levels. So at Sidra in Qatar, because I'm based here for almost um, uh, five years here, we have a huge experience with the hybrid and advanced hybrid closed loop. These are the uh, all our publication. In the last one year, we have performed a study with a minimum of 780 in children and adolescents, direct transition from the multiple daily injections. So we recruited 34 children and adolescents. We were three months duration, and now we are following for the um, for the next uh, nine months. The primary outcome was to, to uh, evaluate the change of the baseline to the first three months of the time and target range. This is our four-step approach that we are using uh, uh, in the, at, at Sidra. So it's a, it's a stepwise approach. So that means that all the patients who are interested in, this, in, the, in, in the insulin pump therapy, they will be invited to, uh, to our introduction session when our educators will explain and will discuss with the, uh, about the patient responsibility expectation from the system. Then we have the training, which is only four days four consecutive days and we start the sensor on the day number one. Then we have the three days of the manual mode, which means the preparation of the, of, of the automation. And after three days, they go uh, live with the automated insulin delivery system. And look at the data. 
uh, uh, before the initiation, they have the time target range of almost 42%. It was almost uh, increased to 78.8% without compromising the hypoglycemia. And the A1C from 8.6%, it went to 6.5%. So 2.1% decrease of the hemoglobin A1C, and it was also performed in a, in a very safe manner without severe hypoglycemia, ketoacidosis, or hospital um, admissions. As you can see here on this slide, this is the time and target range evolution over the first three months. You can see here that after the two weeks of the initiation of the automated insulin delivery, we were reaching the target of seven, more than 70%. And the end of the third month, we reached almost 80% without compromising the hypoglycemic events. And the end of the study, we achieved 6.5% of, of, of the average hemoglobin A1C. 79% of the participants achieved the, the target uh, less than 7%. What about the timing target range? 78.8% reach um, the uh, timing range more than 70%, and 74% of them, they reach this, uh, this glycemic tar um, uh, targets. These are the all previous studies which have shown um, how we can improve the glycemic control. Our goal is to decrease the hemoglobin A1C below 7% and to have more than 70% of the time target range. You can see the other clinical studies. This is the 670G, the previous um, model of the insulin pump therapy. And with the minimum 780G, even we improved even much, much better comparing with the previous therapies. Let's share some of the experiences. Who are the patients who are eligible for this insulin pump therapy? The patients who are with a high A1C, like this 18 years old girl, she has the hemoglobin A1C of 13.2%. When we initiate um, the minimum 780G, you can see here before the time target range was almost 30%. It went to 70%, and only eight weeks after, we reached almost 90%. The patients who are experiencing the hypoglycemic events, they can also benefit this kind of the therapy, like this eight-year-old girl. As you can see here, it's a fairly um, uh, managed diabetes of 7.4% for eight-year-old girl. It's, well, you can say it's quite okay, but look at the time target range. 67%, not so bad, but 12% of the hypoglycemic events. One month after initiation of the minimum 780G, we decreased the, uh, uh, the low glucose values almost 3%. So from 12 to 3% and reaching almost 80% of the time target range. One of the, uh, the important point of when we start the insulin pump therapy, we need to fine tune. And it's a very simple, like the, uh, comparing to the previous insulin pump uh, therapies, because we need to consider changing the carb ratio and the active insulin pump because the basal insulin is delivered automatically. When we change these uh, settings, when we fine tune, um, uh, uh, we reach almost 80% of the time and target range. What about managing a specific situation like the sick day management? If there is a mild or moderate, like this patient who was tested positive with the current status of the fever, cough, muscle aches, and loss of taste, you can see here that even with the minimum 780G, the automation continued to work. And then the time target range from 85% decreased to 75%. You can see a lot of corrections here. So that means that in some cases with the moderate um, with, the, with the moderate sick day management, the pump can manage by itself and to keep the, uh, the steady glucose levels. What about the a protein diet, the keto diet? Uh, the, all the previous pump therapy, they have uh, very difficult protocols that the patient needs to, to make the dual bolus, uh, to split the bolus, and then we have experienced some hyperglycemia here. So when we switch this patient to the automated insulin delivery, look at the time and target range, how, um, uh, how, um, how they were improved almost more than 80%. It gave us more flexible lifestyle. Some of the boluses, when they're, when they're missed, like in this, the new year, if, for example, without the bullets, the pump was keeping the steady glucose profile. So in that period, there was 70% time target range. The patients who are experiencing the sh uh, short stature and uh, who are on the growth hormone replacement therapy, we all know that it's a mess with the glycemic control. So like this patient, for example, is receiving the multiple daily injections and the growth hormone replacement therapy, the, the time and target range was almost 23%. When we switched to the uh, automated insulin delivery, uh, we, we, as you can see here, we, we increased the time and target range to almost 77%, and the uh, hemoglobin A1C decreased to 7.1%. So um, quite Im Im impressive improvements in, in these uh, specific cases. So what about the patients who are non-compliant, the patients who cannot do the carb counting? 
like for example, this patient who is a 12 years old uh, girl. So previously, and she has the A1C from 10 to 13 percent, and she has om only 8 percent of the time target range. So comparing with finding the uh, the criteria, the pump criteria, this patient will not be suitable for the insulin pump therapy. And this patient will stay away from the insulin pump therapy. And like in the last um, in the last couple of years, this patient will have the high hemoglobin A1C. When this patient was switched to the automated insulin pump therapy, as you can see here, the his hemoglobin A1C, the GMI, decreased to 7.5%. Even there are a lot of autocorrections, but 7.5 is much, much better than 10 or 11. So he's not bolusing, but it means that we are opening the new criteria for the insulin uh, for the, for the insulin pump therapy when we have the automated insulin delivery. So with the minimum 7 ATG, when we have our protocol, this four-step approach, doesn't matter what kind of the background therapy um, that we have with the MDI, the pump, the sensor emitted pump therapy, all of them, they can use, uh, the, they, they can benefit of this 10-day initiation protocol. The only difference is, is in the training. It can last from four days for the patient who are using the multiple daily injections. And we are using the, if the patient is using the latest, the, the previous model therapy, we just need uh, to, uh, to have one day. The initiation, the, the follow-up, it's almost the same. And I can say that we are doing a lot of virtual initiations. You can um, find our protocols online, uh, uh, which means that during the, the pandemic, we have initiated, uh, um, we have initiated a lot of patients uh, using the virtual protocol. So at the end, I would like to conclude that the minimum 7 ATG, the advanced hybrid closed loop, it, um, it, it brings the significant clinical improvements in the both hemoglobin EMS and the time target range. And the optical optimal settings for adults and adolescents, we should use the target of 100 milligram per deciliter and active insulin from two to three hours. The advanced hybrid closed uh, loop uh, system initiation, it can be done in any stage with or without previous pump or any diabetes uh, uh, technology experience. The 10-day initiation protocol that we are currently using is a simple structured pathway and safe and easy. Um, the, I can say that with the minimum 7 ATG, with all these closed loop systems, uh, it's uh, we can improve the glycemic control, but uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't want only to improve the, the the glycemic control. I also want to improve the quality of life of, of the patient. And with this automated insulin delivery, we can do both. We can improve the glycemic control, and we can improve the quality of of the of the patient life. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, doctor. Thank you for the nice and comprehensive uh, lecture. I wonder if there is any uh, question from the floor. Otherwise, I do have a simple question for you. Anybody, no? So uh, I wanna ask, what is the age limit that uh, below which you're not gonna use this pump? The other one, if you have a certain selection criteria upon which you would decide yes or no to give the pump. So this is a very interesting question, uh, especially the second part. The first part that this is the, the minimum 7 ATG, it's approved above seven years old and more than eight units of total daily dose. How, and this is, this is the registration in Europe, but however, we are using this insulin pump even on the, on the, on the younger patients, five years, four years, and five to six units. And it's, it's believe me, it's working quite um, much, much, much uh, better than and improving the uh, glycemic control. The second part of the question um, uh, was, uh, uh, can, you, can you just uh, recall again, what was the second part criteria. of the patient criteria? So, yes, patient criteria. So previously, uh, we wanted to have the patient who is doing the proper carb counting, the patient who is doing the calibrations and um, all the other complicated stuff so they can fit the criteria. Now what we are seeing for the, that we, we have the sensor without the calibration, so we have one less. And the typical patient, what we are seeing in our clinics is usually that not doing the proper carb counting. And we have experience in the last one year. And even if the patient is not doing the proper carb counting, just announcing uh, announcing the, uh, the the food before the meal, it can go the time target range around seventy percent, and it can have the A one C around seven percent. So it means that now we are we are opening the new indications for the insulin pump therapy. We are just um, uh, loosening the the patient that this strict uh, pump criteria. Interesting. Thank you very much. Uh,